one vertical bar origins. Ben Tennyson stands in the forest. It's night time. He stands looking down into a crater, one seemingly created by what Ben originally believed to be a shooting star. Inside the crater is a metallic spherical object. Ben wonders if it's a satellite or something. It's still smoking from the heat of entry into the atmosphere. Suddenly Ben slips as the ground beneath him crumbles. Now inside the crater Ben approaches the object as it opens up revealing a strange device. A watch? Ben says to himself, what's a watch doing in outer space? Out of curiosity Ben reaches out his hand. The device suddenly opens up and jumps at Ben Mr. Tennyson. A voice calls out. One. The fourteen-year-old Ben Tennyson wakes up with a start, drool dribbling from his desk. Wah, Ben stutters still somewhat asleep. For someone who aspires to go to UA you sure are a sub student. The teacher comments. Which is odd because by all means you aren't failing, you have the grades to get into UA but your classroom etiquette needs work. Oh oh yeah totally, Ben stutters having barely been conscious enough to listen. As he's being scolded a few kids express their surprise Ben even made it into UA. He seems like some underachiever but he's a straight B plus student and recently he's managed to up that to an A average. And on top of that the kid is quirkless. Or at least he seems quirkless. After school the class gets their assignments and are dismissed. Ben heads home, a skip in his step. He's more than confident he's going to get into UA. Turns out all he needed to do to up his grades is apply himself more. Using grey matter to help with some assignments and studying did help though. As he rushes he misses his bus. Crud. Ben exclaims almost throwing his backpack aside. But an easy fix. Our hero slips into an alleyway pulling his sleeve back and beginning to fiddle with his watch. Ben twists the dial until he comes across the icon he wants. Pressing the faceplate down he transforms Mr. Tennyson. A voice calls out he 14 year old Ben Tennyson wakes up with a start, drool dribbling from his desk. Wah, Ben stutters still somewhat asleep. For someone who aspires to go to UA you sure are a sub student. The teacher comments. Which is odd because by all means you aren't failing, you have the grades to get into UA but your classroom etiquette needs work. Oh oh yeah totally, Ben stutters having barely been conscious enough to listen. As he's being scolded a few kids express their surprise Ben even made it into UA. He seems like some underachiever but he's a straight B plus student and recently he's managed to up that to an A average. And on top of that the kid is quirkless. Or at least he seems quirkless. After school the class gets their assignments and are dismissed. Ben heads home, a skip in his step. He's more than confident he's going to get into UA. Turns out all he needed to do to up his grades is apply himself more. Using grey matter to help with some assignments and studying did help though. As he rushes he misses his bus. Crud. Ben exclaims almost throwing his backpack aside. But an easy fix. Our hero slips into an alleyway pulling his sleeve back and beginning to fiddle with his watch. Ben twists the dial until he comes across the icon he wants. Pressing the faceplate down he transforms heat blast. Ben exclaims. Plus. Heat Blast, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of the plasma-based pyronite from Pyros. This hothead possesses pyrokinesis allowing him to create and manipulate fire, but be careful those flames aren't just there to look cool a pyronite can often accidentally create fires when near flammable objects, luckily they can also absorb fire into themselves to extinguish it. 15. Heat Blast quickly realizes the problem with a flaming man attempting to carry a flammable backpack with schoolwork inside. But he's going to be late so maybe he can come back with XLR8 or something to grab it. Heat Blast aims his hands downward creating a jet and flying off. Bystanders look up mistaking the blazing light as Endeavor on patrol. 2. Later Ben is having troubles with his schoolwork. Maybe I could use grey matter just one more time. He says to himself activating the Omnitrix. He slams down the faceplate as hard as he can on grey matter's icon Reath. The creature roars before looking at his hand realizing he transformed into the wrong alien. Again. Rat, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of an Apoplexian from the Apoplexa. This tiger-like species are incredibly aggressive on genetic level and would rather fight than talk. Their enhanced senses, physical abilities and retractable claw in each wrist making them fearsome warriors. They are also known for calling people by their full titles and referring to themselves in the third person. 1. Let me tell you something Omnitrix, alien device WHO attached IT self to my wrist with secrets you hid. Rat roars. 28. They are also very well known to initiate conversations with let me tell you something. 
in a very aggressive tone even if they're having a nice chat with a good friend. Rat prefers to hit his problems away but math problems are intangible and Rat cannot hit them without entering a metaphysical plane of existence. 6. Nonetheless Ben is forced to write his homework as Rat. 6. Suffice to say Rat has quite a few words for the pencils that are too tiny for his hands. 2. Vertical bar The exam Ben is currently taking the UA entrance written exam. He spent all night studying like mad. Plus. After that though everyone groups up for the physical exam. Now dressed in a tracksuit. Now go. Present Mick exclaims. Everyone does nothing. What's wrong? Present Mick continues. There's no countdown in a real fight run. Your time starts now. At that everyone begins pushing to get inside first as Ben is forced across a tide of smelly 15 year olds. Entering the training area Ben splits off from the group. Plus. He wanders about until he comes across a roaming pack of robots. Ben twists the dial until he comes across four arms icon. Time to smash some robots. Ben exclaims slamming the faceplate down. 1. A green light envelops Ben as he transforms grey matter, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Galvan from Galvan Prime. What this frog like him plaques in size he makes up for in brains. Two of them to be precise, one for initiating basic activities and the other for cataloging knowledge and skills. Due to their amphibious nature they also possess prehensile tongues and can survive underwater. 6. Grey matter? Seriously? He grumbles looking at his miniaturized hands before looking up at the charging robot now towering above him. Grey matter narrowly dodges the attack as it smashes into the ground. But I can make this work. He mutters running up the automaton's arm before climbing into the back of its head through a gap in between its plating and neck. 5. Grey Matter begins messing about with the circuitry and reprogramming the robot's targeting parameters to turn on its comrades. The one point regressively ploughs through multiple fellow one pointers, two pointers, and even a three pointer with little regard for its own well being. 2. Eventually, it is finally taken down as the half pint hero leaps from the crumbling bot to its destroyer to reprogram it. This cycle continues until Ben's racked up about 35 points by Ben's count. He's usually not good at math but Grey Matter's mind allowed his short attention span to count up points as he fights. Right then the Omnitrix begins flashing red as he times out returning to his human form to make matters worse this happened mid-jump. Plus. Pulled down by his increased gravitational pull he face plants into the chest to a two-pointer and falls down. Ben gets up looking at the robot lifting its arm up to attack. Rolling he grabs the arm ring of one of the robots to use as a shield against the assault. You could not have picked a worse time. Ben yells at the Omnitrix flashing red as it recharges. Man that time was short. Only had four minutes as grey matter. He spends a good few minutes having to defend against a one-pointer with a shield. By the time the dial turns green signaling its recharge only three minutes remain. Excited Ben throws the plate at the one-pointer and activates his watch. You know this robot seems pretty out of date, Ben says twisting the dial. It could really use and Ben doesn't finish hoping if he doesn't finish the Omnitrix will let him transform into the alien he wants. Slamming down he's enveloped in green DNA changing light. Slamming down he's enveloped in green DNA changing light. Oh yeah, Ben exclaims in a reverb voice upgrade. Upgrade, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a galvanic mechamorph from the moon of Galvan Prime, Galvan B this biomechanical shapeshifter can merge itself with any piece of technology and improve it allowing for multiple unique applications. Without hesitation upgrade merges with the robot and takes control. As he envelops the one pointer he reconstructs its right gun to a plasma cannon. Black and green cover the frame before the finishing touch of the Omnitrix placing itself on its chest plate. Black and green cover the frame before the finishing touch of the Omnitrix placing itself on its chest plate 10. It's hero time, Upgrade exclaims still high on the euphoria of getting the right alien. He cocks his cannon and blasts a three-pointer into debris. Then he blasts himself at full speed forward smashing through another one point using his shield as a battering ram. A three-pointer slams into Upgrade's chest destroying both and turning Ben back human. Looking at the Omnitrix Ben notices it's not in recharge mode. Well that's odd. He mutters to himself. Before Ben can investigate further the enormous zero point robot appears. But I'm not going to question it. He says about to turn into XLR8 to run away. But I'm not going to question it. He says about to turn into XLR8 to run away. Suddenly Ben hears someone call out in pain. He looks over to see a girl trapped under rocks. Present Mick announces only two more minutes remain. 
present Mick announces only two more minutes remain. Ben doesn't even know how many points he'd need to pass and he wasted quite a bit of the time limit on waiting for the Omnitrix to recharge. Swallowing his pride he cycles off of XLR8 as he turns around and runs toward the girl. Okay, Ben mutters activating the Omnitrix. This time give me four arms. He slams down transforming. He slams down transforming. A. He sighs up Chuck works too. Up Chuck, the Omnitrix is DNA sample of a band from Pepto's 12. These little toads have a pocket dimension for stomachs and can stretch their mouths to eat essentially anything they can grab and reel in with their four incredibly powerful adhesive tongues. They also possess the ability to regurgitate ingested objects in the form of explosive or acidic bile depending on the nature of what they ate. Much to Ben's sadness men's are incapable of digesting human foods and end up just spitting it at him immediately. In Ben's own words when he found out I'm a bottomless pit, and I can't even digest the good stuff his priority is to help the trapped girl, not to fight the zero point or not that any of Ben's aliens could match the thing. Although four arms clap attack would probably be able to knock it down. Opening his more tendrils shoot out wrapping around rocks pulling them into the uncaring void that is Upchuck's digestive system. As he's eating his way to save this girl another kid steps forward launching himself up towards the robot. Upchuck looks up as he mindlessly fills his mouth with rocks. The green-haired kid lunges toward the zero pointer's head and decks it in the face. Upchuck stares in awe his mouth agape while this tendrils continue delivering rocks into his mouth. Upchuck stares in awe his mouth agape while this tendrils continue delivering rocks into his mouth. Wait wait. The girl calls out as Upchuck's tendrils almost reeled her into the abyss. Three. Oh sorry about that, Upchuck exclaims putting her down. Wait, could you catch him like that? She asks. I can make you lighter and you can jump up to catch him. I can try, Upchuck responds waddling forward like a penguin. The girl touches Upchuck before he uses the regurgitated rocks as jet fuel blasting off. He flies through the skies like a mini jet before he manages to catch the plummeting boy with his tendrils. Now weighted down both fall but at a less deadly speed. Still very deadly to a human though. Seeing no alternative Upchuck consumes the unconscious kid as he uses his now free tendrils to harpoon his way down. As he lands the girl releases her quirk as a crowd forms. Where's the other kid? She asks. Ah right here. Upchuck grumbles pointing at his stomach on the verge of barfing. Upchuck beat his chest with his fist bringing up a burp followed by a wet sounding blee. In a pile of sludge he vomits out the now greener haired kid with a scratch on him well except for the injuries inflicted by his quirk that is. Plus, everyone takes a step back in disgust as recovery girl arrives to deal with the wounded. I hope nobody remembers this, Upchuck mutters to himself. Three vertical bar results slash apprehension test Ben sits in his room a few weeks after the exam waiting impatiently for his letter. He anxiously paces around his room in various alien forms showcasing time passing. There's no doubt I'll get a few new transformations if I get in. He thinks to himself waiting for the Omnitrix to recharge. Last one I got was Rat and that was nearly two years ago. Suddenly the doorbell rings as Ben quickly turns into XLR8 to grab the letter and blast back into his room. XLR8, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a kind Celeron from Clinet, this blue blur possesses incredible super speed being capable of reaching 500 miles per hour within two seconds easily outpacing any camera only barely being able to be seen when played at zero. XLR8, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a kind Celeron from Clinet, this blue blur possesses incredible super speed being capable of reaching 500 miles per hour within 2 seconds easily outpacing any camera only barely being able to be seen when played at 0.25x speed. And as the species grow faster with age XLR8 is yet to reach his limit. 2. Tearing it open he shoot into his chair tapping his foot in Mach 5. The projector opens up revealing all might. I am here, in hollow form. It exclaims. Young Mr. Tennyson. You passed the written exam but only barely, I expect improvement in the future young man, while on the practical exam you utilized your mind and transformative abilities to accumulate a whopping 55 points. On addition due to your, unique heroism saving a fellow student you gained an additional 20 points adding up to 75 points just our first place by 2 points. Amazing. XLR8 almost drops the hollow in shock he, can be a hero. You will be placed in class 1A, I will be teaching this year so I look forward to seeing how you improve. Later Ben is walking to school for his first day. Plus, he woke up extra early for this. Which for him is like 7am. 
he's not even through the front doors before he's stopped. Hey you. Someone calls out. You're that vomit man. 2. WH wah. Ben steps back in embarrassment. I saw you turn into that vomit man. He announces. His name is Upchuck. Ben corrects under his breath. Vomitman. The glasses man repeats. 3. Could you not tell people about who I am? Ben asks. I'd rather not start the school year known as the kid who ate another kid and vomited him out. And so you don't keep calling me Vomitman. My name is Ben Tennyson. Yours? Tenuida. He announces. Ida? Ben inquires. As in the family of pro heroes he does? The very same. Ida answers. After that encounter Ben makes it to class 1A's homeroom. Everyone is arguing. Including Tenuida which is weird because Ben didn't see him enter. Ben quickly makes it to a free desk and sits in silence thinking up quips to use as his aliens get ready to throw hands. He mutters to himself as he writes it down, all four of them. That's when the green-haired kid enters. Plus, unlike Ben he cannot hide from the legacy of Vomit Manupchuk. Damn it now he's doing it. I wonder what happened to that short green puke kid. He manages to hear the brown-haired girl from before say. He was pretty cool, if not a bit gross. He just wants to put her mind at ease. PSST. Ben leans over to her whispering. That was me. He turns to Upchuck's icon showing her didn't want to say anything publicly cues. You know. The girl stares at him blankly. Because what? She says tilting her head. Plus. Because I didn't want to be known for vomiting out a classmate. Ben says slightly embarrassed. Before Ben can continue the teacher comes out of a sleeping bag like a beautiful moth after a metamorphosis. 3. He introduces himself as Shoto Aizawa before taking the class out for a quirk apprehension test. Last place will be expelled. To demonstrate what Ben can only assume is a chihuahua in human form uses his explosives quirk to launch a ball. 3. Forearms ought to blow these tests out of the water. Ben exclaims slamming down only remembering that when he wants forearms he tends to not get forearms. Nonetheless he's transformed into the alien the Omnitrix gives him. Everyone looks on in awe as he's enveloped in green light for a, I mean diamond head. 1. A, at least he'll do better than Cannon Bolt would. He sighs. 11. Everyone looks at him. What? Diamond Head asks. Are we gonna get this on or? Diamond Head takes position on the 50 meter dash track. The gun goes off as he takes off. He utilizes small crystal protrusions in the ground to boost his steps managing to get more distance per step. He gets 5.56 seconds. Next is the grip test. An octopus-like student named Mozo Shoji gets 540.0 kilograms while the green-haired kid Ben recently learned is named as Yuku Midoriya gets a measly 56.0 kilograms. Looking at the device Diamond Head reinforces his arm in crystal before squeezing with all his strength. 6. 572.4 kilograms. Diamond Head, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Patrasapien from Patropia. These silicon-based life forms bodies are composed of extremely thick organic green crystals. They have the ability to manipulate the atomic structure of their physiology at will, allowing them to form their limbs into diamond weapons such as blades and bludgeons. Moreover, they can control all the crystals they generate, to the point that they can make them explode or lift them off the ground. While the repeated side steps weren't very well suited for Diamond Head another grape kid named Minoru Minato is great at it. What a cool little dude. He thinks to himself. I know nothing about him but I'm sure he's a chill dude. 19. Next is the sandbox which Diamond clears by using a crystal ramp at the last second to launch himself over do a flip and then immediately fall flat on his face. 2. Finally is the ball throw. The brown-haired girl Ben learns whose name is Akako Uraraka yeets that sucker into orbit. Pomeranian man uses his anger and explosions to blast it even further than last time. Then is Azuku Midoriya who charges his overwhelming power to throw it like two meters from where he was standing. Aizawa then gives a very inspirational and very long speech about how it's a bad idea to break your arms when being a hero so he ends up only breaking one finger to throw it a whole 0.1 meter further than Blonzuka. Last up is Diamond Head who takes a stance gripping the ball tight before throwing it with all his strength. 1. 507 meters. Which may not be anywhere near the top tiers but is fairly impressive for someone not using some force to propel it. Diamond Head does ridiculously average for the final three only slightly handicapped in the sit-ups not helped by the fact he timed at halfway through his fifth sit-up. 
Later Aizawu is showing everyone the ranking. 1. Momoye Oyazu. 2. Shoto Todoroki. 3. Katsuki Bakugo. 4. Tenyoida. 5. Fumikage Tokoi Army. 6. Ben Tennyson. 4. 7. Mezo Shoji. 8. Mashirao Ojiro. 9. Ijiro Kairishima. 10. Mina Ashino. 11. Akako Uraruka. 12. Koji Koda. 13. Tsu Asui. 14. Yuga Aoyama. 15. Hantasaro. 16. Denghi Kamenari. 17. Kyokajiro. 18. Toru Hagakyo. 19. Minoru Minita. 1. 20. Izuku Midoriya. Ben pumps his fist, he's never been in the top 10 of anything. 7. Sad Midoriya is getting expelled though. Aizawa, good thing I lied. Thos this the girl with the mature figure, Momoye Oirozu goes on a lecture about how it was obvious from the beginning. 16. But like most lectures this falls on deaf ears for Ben. As she continues on Ben rubs his head. I hope the whole year isn't like this. Four vertical bar battle trial the next day of class Ben is writing down puns. Nobody realizes just how hard it is to pull off quips. First you have to brainstorm them, just so happen to find yourself in the right situation, and hope it lands. 8. Not even considering having to think of quips in the moment. Suddenly all might bursts through the door. I am here, coming through the door like a normal person. He calls out. Everyone gets excited seeing All Might, being surprised that he really is teaching here now. I will be your hero basics teacher, he continues. Teaching you all the basics of being a hero today's class will be about, battle. Bakugo gets a devilish grin on his face, making everyone feel unsettled. All Might, everyone will be given their costumes based on your quirk registrations and designs you sent in before school started. Now get changed. Ben always had a grand idea of his costume. It'd have a cape and a visor and cool high-tech power gloves and he forgot to submit the design. 42. So naturally Ben is forced to just wear a casual white shirt covered in a black jacket with green pants. So naturally Ben is forced to just wear a casual white shirt covered in a black jacket with green pants 9. Maybe sometime he can get a change but today is not the time. Everyone meets outside in their costumes and Ben while well Ben was initially concerned about people thinking he didn't put effort but some of the students are also wearing jackets over simple white shirts and cargo pants. All might. Now, shall we begin you zygotes? 1. Everyone is ready. All might. This will be a two on two indoor battle, you will be put on a team of two then will then be picked to face off against another team. The story is a team of heroes must stop a team of villains from keeping a nuclear weapon, the heroes win if they retrieve the weapon before time runs out, the villains win if they keep the weapon secure until time runs out everyone is paired up, Izuku is paired with Akuko, and Bakugo is paired with Ida, Ben gets paired with Koji Koda, the quiet kid with a head formation. 2. First up is Izuku and Akuko vs Bakugo and Ida, Ben watches on the monitors as Bakugo immediately goes after Izuku. He watches as they fight with everything they have, while that is going on, Akako and Ido are actually trying to complete their goals, the first match ends with Bakugo and Izuku destroying a portion of the building, and Akako securing the fake nuke. The class has a conversation about how Ida was the MVP despite his team lost, again Ben doesn't really listen but gets the gist, don't get cocky, don't be reckless. For the second round it's the invisible girl and the tail kid versus Mezo Shoji, the octopus kid and Shoto Todoroki one of the two recommended students within 1A. Also the son of the number 2 hero, Endeavor. The match ends quickly as Todoroki simply freezes his opponents to the ground and gets the nuke. A few more matches happen before it's finally Ben's turn. He and Koda are made villains having to protect the nuke. The heroes being a pink girl and a blonde dude in medieval s karma. 1. Ben begins to think of a plan. This isn't like most situations where he has to be on the offensive and can pick a heavy hitter, he has to stall an opponent. Diamond Head would be able to create a barricade while Wild Mutt would be able to detect our opponents. Which sounds better? Ben asks his partner. He shyly nods his head. Well guess we'll see which on I get. Ben presses down the faceplate in an attempt to transform into either. Ben presses down the faceplate in an attempt to transform into either. Ditto. Ben exclaims in frustration. What's Ditto supposed to do in this situation? 5. Ditto, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Splixen from Hatha, 
This bean-like species has the ability to self-duplicate, each clone being able to telepathically communicate with one another. But every clone shares a sensory web sharing physical sensations, meaning if you burn one all the others are going to feel that pain and if you kill one, you kill them all. Splixons are far more flexible than the average human, can breath underwater and are incredibly good diggers, able to dig underground and pop up like a mole. Hey! Ditto one asks, what is your quirk? Plus. He turns to see his partner hiding behind the nuke before speaking in sign language. Of which none of the dittos understand. Okay you and I will go down there. Ditto 3 says to Ditto 4 while you two stay here and help Coda defend the nuke. Hey. Ditto 1 exclaims. Who put you in charge? Um, you? Ditto 3 answers. Yeah, I was just messing with you ask me. Ditto 1 laughs. Ditto 3 and 4 exit the room as Ditto 1 and 2 stay behind. Before they know it they come across the pink girl, Ashido Mina and the blonde dude, Yuga Aoyama. Near immediately they display their confusion by the creature's cute bean-like body shape. Or, you're a cute little guy. Mina comments bending down. Cute or not. Ditto 4 responds. We're still your foe. Ditto 3 adds putting up his claws. Wait weren't we fighting that Ben kid? Mina whispers to her partner. And his quirk was that crystal thing not duplication right? Without hesitation the dittos jump their opponents causing a conflict. Both dittos split to make it to 4 on 2 fight. Ditto 3, give up. Ditto 4, you're outnumbered. Ditto 5, forfeit. Ditto 6, you really don't want this fight. Without hesitation Mina cups her hand before throwing acid at Ditto 5 slightly burning his arm. Every Ditto quickly grab their left arm in pain. Upstairs Ditto 1 and 2 feel this. Ow, should we go help them? Ditto 2 asks. A, they have it handled. Ditto 1 responds leaning against a wall. Back downstairs the Dittos are keeping AOI armor and Mina at bay having duplicated multiple more times to overwhelm their foes. Ditto 14, we can do this all day. 1. Ditto 9, well technically we can only do this for about 7 more minutes. 2. Ditto 11, A, the timer is almost up, we'll manage. AOI armor screams as he's dogpiled by 6 Dittos duplicating into 12. Meanwhile Mina is still managing to hold off Dittos as she makes her way upstairs. She makes it to the door as Ditto 12 grabs her by the leg duplicating as she pulls herself forward. All three Dittos make it their goal to keep Mina back as a conga line of Dittos form. Mina uses her acid to melt through the ground to gain traction as she slowly continues on. Inches away from touching it Ditto 1 and 2 grab her other foot and manage to trip her up falling flat on her face. Exhausted the Dittos now begin to lower their numbers dropping back to 3. As the alarm signifying the time limit has run out the three dittos duplicate into a cheerleader pyramid before collapsing back into a single ditto. As the alarm signifying the time limit has run out the three dittos duplicate into a cheerleader pyramid before collapsing back into a single ditto. Tada! The now single ditto exclaims before timing out. Now I remember why I loved ditto so much when I was ten. A hyped Ben says pumping his fist. Through the comms All Might declares the villain's victory. The heroes fail to stop the nuke leading to millions of deaths, villain team wins. Okay you didn't need to make it sound that dark, Ben mutters looking up. Five vertical by u.s.j, part 1 Azawa, today your lesson in foundational skill of heroics will be the trial of rescue. We will be going to the unforeseen simulation joint or the USJ facility, a practical training area that is designed to simulate any kind of accident or disaster. We will be training your rescue skills in multiple situations. Plus, Ben ensures he's packed a lunch but elects to stay in his UA jumpsuit than wear his hero costume. The class arrive and are greeted by someone in a space suit. Question mark colon everyone I have been waiting for you. The entire class seems awestruck by this person as Ben realizes that this is the space hero, 13. 13, let's go inside without a delay. We look forward to working with you everyone in the class say in unison, Ben tries to say it with them halfway through but it comes out as sort of a mumble. Everyone heads inside of the USJ, 13 gives a speech yet again Ben doesn't really pay attention to, but at least he hears the part about six zones for different situations. Aizawa, all right then, first. Aizawa is interrupted by the lights going out. A black vortex appears in the center of the facility, it begins to contort and expand. Aizawa, gather together and don't move. 13, protect the students. What is that? The kid with the red hair, Ijiro Kairishimu asks. 
looking at the vortex some skinny malnourished looking emo dude with hands all over his body exits the vortex, followed by a huge number of crazy looking weirdos. Don't move. Azawa commands putting on his glasses those are villains. Plus. The final one to exit the vortex looks like if Big Bird and Mr. Popo had a weird love child that ate muscle milk with his steroid Cheerios. Yes I loved that joke so much I reused it. Plus. Azawa, the trespassing the other day was the work of these scumbags after all, huh? The massive villains start making their way toward the class. Momo, Todaroki, and Thirteen talk about how one of the villains must have a quirk that allowed them to bypass the infiltration sensors. Azawa, Thirteen, begin the evacuation. Kamenari you try contacting the school with your quirk too. I'm leaving it to you Thirteen. Azawa leaps down into the mass of villains and begins to kick the collective asses of almost every villain. While that is going on the vortex appears in front of the entire class, a voice comes from the vortex and a face forms. While that is going on the vortex appears in front of the entire class, a voice comes from the vortex and a face forms. 4. Question mark colon nice to meet you, we are the League of Villains. It may be presumptuous of us, but we have invited ourselves in, to the home of the heroes, U. A high school, I had believed all might should have been here, has there been some kind of change? Before anyone can react. Bakugo and Kairishima lunge at the vortex, Bakugo throwing an explosion at it. Kairishima, did you ever consider you'd get beaten by us before you did? Question mark colon that's right, even if you are students you are excellent golden eggs. 13, get behind me. Question mark colon my job is to scatter you all and torture you to death. Before anyone could react further he expands enveloping the entire class in his pitch B Ben quickly presses the button on the Omnitrix that opens up the dial but he finds himself elsewhere, now 6 meters about a body of water. Plus. Please not heat blast. Please not heat blast. Please not heat blast. Ben chants pressing down the Omnitrix as he falls. Please not heat blast. Please not heat blast. Please not heat blast. Ben chants pressing down the Omnitrix as he falls rip jaws. The aquatic beast roars splashing into the water immediately feeling at home. Plus. His legs begin to merge into a single fish tail. Well what do you know? He says looking at the symbol on his left breast. Sometimes you can give me perfect aliens. Rip jaws, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Pisx Volan, being fish these guys are able to breath underwater and swim at incredible speeds, on top of that as Ben's name for it could tell you these aquatic creatures possess an extremely powerful bite force being able to rip steel apart in seconds using its mouth alone. But being a fish he cannot survive out of water for any longer than a few minutes. 1. He blasts off in the water seeing an aquatic villain. With a crocodile grin Rip Jaws grabs him by the back of the head and begins thrashing about like one. Minus the hole ripping his prey into swallowable chunks. The now dizzy villain begins floating towards the surface as Rip Jaws continues swimming. Another villain attempts to attack him only for Rip Jaws to dodge his attack unhinging his jaws to let off a guttural roar in the villain's face. The now terrified villain swims away only to be smacked by Rip Jaws tail. Plus. Eventually he comes across a boat and begins climbing up to get a vantage point. I need to find everyone else. He mutters to himself. His legs split again as he throws himself aboard landing on his feet. SC scary. A voice calls out. Suddenly something hits Rip Jaws across the face as he turns to see Midoriya and two other 1A students, Minoru Minato and the frog girl, Asuitsu. Midoriya, a villain's made it on board. The frog-like girl exclaims. Wait, wait, wait. Rip Jaws frantically calls out holding his hands up. I tease me. It's Ben. Wait, Ben? As in the Ben who transforms? Midoriya questions. Yep, Rip Jaws says putting his hands on his hips heroically. Pretty neat huh? Midoriya then begins muttering to himself about the implications of multiple transformations. Pretty lucky we'd both get thrown into the ship wrecked area huh? Asui. Rip Jaws comments call Mitsu. She responds suddenly they're interrupted as multiple aquatic villains surround the boat. That's when Midoriya seems to begin scheming. If they have a way to defeat All Might. Then right now, we should be stopping whatever they're planning. By fighting and winning. Agreed. Rip Jaws exclaims. To this minute her begins freaking out about how futile it is. While he cries in the back Midoriya puts together that they probably don't know their quirks due to how if they did they would have put Asuitsu into the fire area to mess with her quirk. Midoriya deduces that since they don't know their quirks they separated everyone to overwhelm them with numbers. The fact none of the villains are attempting to climb the boat leading Midoriya to figure out they plan to fight in the water. 
which mean they aren't being underestimated. As everyone thinks they begin explaining their quirks. Sue's quirk allows her to do anything a frog can do. Midoriya explains he has super strength but it's a one-time use and then he's out of commission. Monitor's quirk allows him to use grape-like orbs on his head to stick. They only bounce on him and he starts to bleed if he pulls them off too fast. Finally Ben gives a quick rundown at how he can transform into a multitude of forms, sometime it doesn't work out how he plans and the up to 10 minute time limit with a 2 to 5 minute cooldown. So I'm stuck like this for about 7 more minutes, Ripjaws says pouring a glass of water he found over his head. Have you tried pressing on your symbol again? Tsui comments. Come on, Ripjaws responds reaching to press down the Omnitrix symbol just to humor her. If that worked wouldn't I have noticed. He presses down transforming back human. Ben just stands there staring blankly at so you have had this thing for five years and that somehow never crossed my mind. He looks down to even see the Omnitrix isn't even in recharge mode meaning he can transform again at any time. Well that'll be useful. I can conserve battery. Plus. Right then the boat is cleaved in half by a villain. Everyone begins to panic. Ben, turn into rip jaws again. Midoriya orders. Ben presses down transforming back into rip jaws. Ben presses down transforming back into rip jaws. I have a plan. Midoriya begins. Ben, when you first arrived we mistook you as a villain. Suffice to say due to their large numbers it wouldn't be too crazy to assume they'll assume you're one of them if they see you. And they're expecting to fight kids. Rip jaws adds. Rip jaws doesn't look like a kid. Exactly. Midor oi, oi, oi. Rip jaws exclaims jumping into the water. What the hell you think you're doing? Plus. Who are you? One of the villains inquires cautiously. The guy who just did your jobs for you. Names Rip Jaws took care of the three brats up there. Two were even my favorite flavor. Frog and grape. What? One of the villains mutters still skeptical. Rip Jaws rubs his temple. While you dorks were dicking around I climbed in through the bottom of the boat. Why do you think that kid was screaming and crying so much? Rip Jaws sighs I was eating his friends alive, and then there I'm just trying to digest my meal when that jackass over there cleaved the boat in half. He doesn't look like a kid. Another villain mutters looking at him. Are you questioning me? Rip Jaws snarls baring his teeth. Yes. We are. Another says surrounding his hand in water. Ah, I see. Rip Jaws mutters slowly backing up. Midoriya. He calls out before diving underwater. Midoriya jumps off the boat and plummets toward the water. Rip Jaws makes it to the bottom of the pool before an enormous tide pool opens up tight to the force of Midoriya's attack. The aquatic alien outraces the torrent as he jumps out of the water pressing down on the Omnitrix symbol transforming back as he lands on his feet. Oh I'm going to get used to this. He says to himself with a grin cycling through aliens time for you guys to feel my Ben calls out slamming down on the Omnitrix. Rat or crud stink fly. 2. I'm starting to think I should stop calling out what I want, Stinkfly mutters before flying off. Forearms, diamond head, cannon bolt, heck even wild mutt would be better suited, Stinkfly mutters to himself as he guns down villains with slime. Stinkfly, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Lepidopteran from Leopard Terror. Along with flight and a durable exoskeleton these odorous insects can excrete high-pressured streams of liquid from the pollen ducts located inside of their eye stalks and mouth. These liquids can be both a flammable toxin or an immobilizing adhesive, instinctively choosing what type of slime it can be. Stinkfly zips around dodging attacks and fighting off anyone around him. That's when he sees it, Azawa having the absolute crap beat out of him by an Omu AI Azawa. Stinkfly 6 vertical bar US quickly Stinkfly presses the Omnitrix symbol down before sliding down a nearby slope. Plus. The Nomu crushes Azawa's arm. Ben dials up the Omnitrix and twists until he comes across four arms. Come on Omnitrix, Ben prays, worry in his eyes. For the sake of my friends please give me four arms when I lock him in. Closing his eyes Ben slams down being engulfed in the Omnitrix's transformative light. Closing his eyes Ben slams down being engulfed in the Omnitrix's transformative light. 8. Booer. The Crimson Clobber exclaims excitedly. Finally four arms baby. Four arms, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a tetramand from Kuras. This Ruhausa can lift objects several times his size and can attack at incredible speeds using all four of his arms, making him Ben's most physically powerful transformation to date. Ben has often theorized whether four arms' physical power could rival All Might's dot creature with all four hands in a sort of wrestling move and hurling it across the USJ, throwing him off Azawa. Plus, 
four armed smirks staring down the Nomu. Get ready to throw hands, he remarks putting his dukes up, all four of them. The Nomu responds with a blood-curdling primal screech and charges its foe. Four arms does the same letting off a guttural battle cry and charging. The two titans of raw strength clash creating a shockwave sending dust flying in all directions. Using all his strength for arms matches the Nomu's power with effort. Plus. You know I think this is the first time I've had four arms actually struggling with something. He grunts to himself. He uses his lower arms to deliver two powerful blows to the beast's sides to little effect. Damn it. Four arms mutters. How durable is this thing? Elsewhere out of the corner of his four eyes the emo villain attempts to kill Tsu only to be stopped by a razor head leading to Midoriya attacking. Plus. The Nomu head butts four arms dazing him before rushing toward his master. As four arms recovers suddenly the Omnitrix symbol begins flashing red. It hasn't even been a minute damn it. Four arms exclaims. Should have known switching lessens the time. Before he can get back in the fight he's reverts and the Omnitrix goes into recharge mode. Ben can do nothing as he watches in horror at the unfolding events. Midoriya's attack is caught by the creature shaking off the damage about to kill him. As this is going on Emo Hand Man is moments away from killing Minotaur. At that moment time seems to stop as Ben knows he won't make it in time. He's powerless without the Omnitrix. He's only quirkless. Suddenly the doors of the USJ bust open as smoke blasts from the destroyed door. Revealing all might. Have no fear. He exclaims heroically. I am here. Everyone except the emo guy is awed by All Might's arrival who seems way too into watching a roid beast trip a kid apart. Plus. The number one hero quickly dispatches of the grunts and picks up Azawa. All Might, I'm sorry Azawa, I should have been here. All Might turns and quickly grabs Izuku, Minata, Tsu, and Ben before anyone can react. All Might, everybody back to the entrance, and take Azawa with you, he doesn't have much time. Izuku, be careful All Might that creature took one for a one of my punches and he wasn't phased at all. All Might, young Midoriya, I got this. Minata, Tsu, and Izuku carrying Aizawa run toward the entrance, Ben follows them but at a slower speed trying to watch the fight. All Might charges at the creepy dude but the Nomu gets in front of All Might's attack and is not phased, the Nomu fights back, All Might dodges his attacks still trying to get a few punches in. The creepy guy gloats about how attacking the Nomu is futile, it can survive All Might at 100% and how All Might has met his match. All Might gives off a mighty backbreaker causing a big explosion, some think that maybe All Might destroyed the creature and won, but then the dust settles, and everyone sees the truth. The Nomu going through a vortex digging its claws into All Might's side, the Nomu begins to drag All Might down into the vortex Ben manages to hear the villains talking about how they were going to try to rip All Might in half by closing the vortex when he was halfway through. Izuku, Tsu, can you carry Mr. Aizawa? Tsu, ah, uh, yeah. Izuku hands Aizawa to Tsu and quickly charges toward the fight, Ben following him. Izuku, don't try to stop me Ben I'm not gonna stand by and let All Might die. Neither am I Omnitrix or not I need to help, he responds. Izuku gives a smile of relief as the two both charge toward the action. Wait Omni what? Izuku asks. Ben's only received minor injuries, his arms ache a bit after exerting himself so far to stand toe to toe with Anomu and he scraped his knee a bit as Rip Jaws having shot himself to the pool floor to escape Midoriya's attack. Plus. Izuku jumps at the villains without really thinking it through and the Vortex Man gets ready to envelope Izuku. An explosion blows the darkness away. Bakugo, get the hell out to my way Diku, slamming the vortex man down by his collar. Ice begins to surround the Nomu as Todoroki arrives berating the villains for believing they could kill All Might. All Might uses this opportunity to release himself from the creature's grip and backflip beside Todoroki. Kairishima lunges at the emo hands guy who dodges the attack and just stares at everyone with a silent rage. Question mark colon they escaped uninjured and captured two of my strongest men. These heroes are the real deal, they make us look like amateurs, can't be having that can we? Nomu. The Nomu burst out of the vortex shattering its frozen bits off, everyone acts like this means it's defeated but it appears unfazed. Everyone looks in horror as its arm and leg grow back almost instantly, it then immediately charges at everyone seeming to body check Bakugo into a wall, but when the dust settles it was All Might who took the hit for Bakugo. All Might, you maniacs, these are kids. And you didn't even hold back? Question mark colon they left me no choice, he was threatening my companion, 
Besides these kids are no angels, the plain looking one tried to take me out with a max out punch, and the transforming one pile drift my poor Nomu. Now what kind of heroes would do that? The guy gives some sort of speech about how society is flawed, and I am the good guy and you are the real bad guys but Ben knows that's just what villains tell themselves to justify their actions. Everyone gets ready to fight, confident that they can take them, but All Might tells everyone no, I can handle this to which everyone is convinced. Ben looks down to see the Omnitrix is still in recharge mode having to swallow his desire to help and watches. Kuro Gairi, Namu kill All Might, I'll take care of the children charging at you and the boys. Plus. All Might lunges at the emo guy but the Nomu intercepts. Question mark colon what are you doing? He has shock absorption. All Might, and what about it? You said its quirk is shock absorption not nullification, so there's a limit to how much he can take. All Might begins to do some damage, as shockwave after shockwave begin to fill the facility All Might sends the Nomu flying with a single plus ultra. Punch. Smoke begins to emit from All Might's skin. All Might looks really beaten up. Question mark colon what are we going to do now? Kurogairi, Tomora Shigaraki, Nomu weak and All Might we can finish him off. Tomora lunges at All Might ready to kill him, while some of the other grunts get up and begin to surround the children, Izuku suddenly launches himself at the man his legs noodles once more. Izuku, get away from All Might. Izuku charges up a punch ready to blow the villains away, Ben watches in horror as Tomora uses Kurogairi to try and grab him by the face. He remembers seeing his touch dissolve things earlier. Ben furiously begins banging on the Omnitrix in the hopes of something, anything happening. A bullet flies through the sky and goes right through his hand causing Izuku to simply fall face first into the ground rather than die instantly. Ben looks up to see almost every pro hero in Japan standing atop the staircase, he hears a familiar voice yell out. I, Tenorida, Class 1A representative, have returned. Ida stands proud beside all the pro heroes. The heroes absolutely destroy the villains. The two villains, Kurogairi and Tomora, attempt to escape, before so being shot by a few more bullets courtesy of the gunslinger hero, Snipe. Kurogairi surrounds Tomora in an attempt to protect them and they both disappear. Plus, the pros begins tending to everyone's injuries as the pro hero, Cementos, creates a wall preventing anyone from seeing all might. Which Ben finds suspicious but doesn't question, as long as nobody died. The rest of the day is uneventful. But then again almost any day is uneventful when compared to the events of today. Could do with a smoothie right now, Ben mutters to himself rubbing his head. 7 Vertical Bar Sports Festival begins the time of the UA Sports Festival is here. Plus. Everyone in Class 1A has been walked into a crowded stadium. Bakugo gives a cocky speech about how he's going to win instantly making him a target. The first event is a 4 km obstacle race. Ben wants to save his transformations for when it's needed. Just using Accelerate would be ideal but Ben has no idea what the Omnitrix will give him. For all he knows it could give him grey matter who'd make this whole race feel like 16 kilometers instead of 4. But plans don't go as thought out as the moment the race starts Todoroki freezes the ground solid preventing anyone behind him from going further. Ben manages to avoid having his feet frozen but still struggles with running. Heat Blast or Accelerate would be great right now. Ben says slamming down the Omnitrix. Ben says slamming down the Omnitrix. Oh oh okay oh Omnitrix. Wild Vin shivers. A a plant in an eye ice fields is not a good M mix. Nonetheless he rolls with it and uses his bulbs to smash through the ice before digging his roots into the ground and burrowing through the ground and under the ice. Wild Vin, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Florona from Fleur's Verdance. Wildvin can grow and alter the size of his body like a real plant but also retract it again at will. He can also grow and extend his arms, legs and fingers into vine-like tentacles to grab and restrain others. He is also extremely flexible due to his plant-like body. His fingers can stick to walls, which allow him to swing around. On top of this he can also merge into plant life and can produce explosive buds from his back giving him the ultimate green thumb dot resurfacing he now has to deal with the exam robots using his vines to constrict them and smash them together. Plus. Suddenly three enormous zero pointers resurface blocking the path. Without hesitation Wildveen grapples onto one of the zero pointers Todoroki froze his wrists and swings by leaving everyone else behind. The plant scampers by attempting to gain on Todoroki. Wasn't very nice what you did back there. He mutters to himself. But if you're playing dirty so am I. He attempts to wrap a vine around Todoroki's left leg. 
expecting him to activate his quirk he's actually held back a bit and has to grab the vine with his right hand before it freezes and shatters dot giving me the cold shoulder are we? Wildvin chuckles to himself. Plus. But he does take note of the fact his right side seems to be the only one he can produce ice from. Next stage is the fall an enormous canyon with multiple rock platforms. Oh yeah. Wildvin exclaims. Now we're talking. Wildvin casually begins stepping between the platforms with his extended vine legs. Turning around he sees he's still in second place. The final hurdle of the race is a minefield. Believing he has time Wildvin begins slowly walking in between the mines merging one leg into the ground to scout them out. Suddenly the blonde blitz Bakugo blasts before Ben blurting bastard. Having to pick up the pace as Bakugo shoots past into second a few of Wildvin's legs are blown off as he runs. Eventually Wildvin chooses to continue playing dirty wrapping vines around both Bakugo and Todoroki and using their momentum to slingshot while also slowing them down. Both are yanked back as Wildvin blasts forward. You damn photosynthesis bastard. Bakugo roars burning the vines away while Todoroki casually freezes them before shattering them to pieces. 5. Bakugo lunges forward grabbing Wildvin by the head attempting to unleash a torrent of explosions in his eye. 1. Defensively Wildvin clamps his head trap close causing Bakugo to pull his arm back redirecting his attack for Wildvin's mass. Before that though an enormous pink mushroom cloud fills the sky as Midoriya surfs the blast on a robot piece. Oh yeah that's pretty cool. Wildvin smirks to himself. Using the distraction Wildvin pulls two bulbs from his back throwing them down detonating a mine sending everyone flying. Inspired by Midoriya's idea Wildvin forms a plan while soaring. Okay time to test this out. Wildvin mutters pressing the Omnitrix down reverting. As he falls he dials up cannon bolt slamming down. As he falls he dials up cannon bolt slamming down. Diamond head works too. He comments slamming his forearms together forming a shield. Crashing into a mine diamond head is launched back into the air as he rolls through the air at incredible speeds. Midoriya blasts past him. Oh it's on. Diamond head laughs as he blasts off from another mine reverting midair. Let's try this again. Cannonbolt, Bent says pressing down the Omnitrix as he rolls through the air. Cannonbolt, Bent says pressing down the Omnitrix as he rolls through the air. 1. Cannonbolt curls up into a ball landing past the mines. Cannonbolt, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of Arborian Pilarota from the destroyed Arboria. Cannonbolt possesses the ability to curl up into his indestructible shell and roll at incredible speeds making him a near unstoppable force. Continuing to roll Cannonbolt is catching up to Midoriya almost overtaking him only to be stopped by Todoroki freezing a ramp causing him to launch up reducing his momentum. Quick change bastard. Bakugo blasts past. Regaining his speed Cannonbolt rolls noticing the Omnitrix symbol begin to flash red. Cannonbolt continues on as fast as he can until he passes the finish line. Hoping to look cool Cannonbolt uncurls right as he reverts but then ends up wiping out getting a face full of dirt. At least he got fourth. 1. The rest of the people that pass the race event get in a crowd, Midnight explains the next event is a cavalry battle. Teams of 2 to 4 will form a horse and try to steal each other's points the highest points being 10 million given to first place of the race. Everyone turns to Glarat as Yuku with malicious intent. Everyone chooses their teams while Ben tries to think of who to join. Ideally he could join Midoriya, even if that makes him a target. But maybe Todoroki or Bakugo might let him join, they're fairly powerful and they'd probably rather have him on their side. Excuse me, someone taps Ben on the shoulder. He turns to see a boy with purple hair and eyes. He turns to see a boy with purple hair and eyes. Ben Tennyson of class 1A, correct? Yeah, Ben answers. Suddenly his eyes go blank as his consciousness fades. Dot dot 8 Vertical Bar Sports Festival 2, Electric Boogaloo The next few minutes are a haze for Ben. Plus. Just rapid movement. The most vivid part is when he slams down on the Omnitrix. Clarification, Shinsu would have watched Ben during the race and would notice how Ben activates the Omnitrix and would be able to walk him through it before commanding him to cycle through until he saw one that looked like it could carry his team. Clarification, Shinsu would have watched Ben during the race and would notice how Ben activates the Omnitrix and would be able to walk him through it before commanding him to cycle through until he saw one that looked like it could carry his team. Literally. After that his blurry vision goes blank now replaced by Wild Mutt's enhanced senses forming a clear 3D map for Ben to observe. Despite being unable to control his body Ben manages to see everything through Wild Mutt's vision. 
Wild Mutt, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a Vulpimenser from Vulpin. These canine-like beasts lack in having eyes they make up for with their other incredibly enhanced senses giving them a complete 3D layout of their surroundings at all times being able to detect invisible foes just as easily as the visible ones. Wild Mutt's one weakness? He is physically unable to speak any language other than animalistic snorts and growls. A passenger in his own body Ben watches as Wild Mutt carries Shinsu and his two teammates running around using his acrobatic skill to run across the side of the arena to avoid opponents as Shinsu holds his quills like reins. By the end his team makes it into third place. Wild Mutt regains consciousness attempting to question his predicament but comes off as snorts and barks. Wild Mutt regains consciousness attempting to question his predicament but comes off as snorts and barks. But at least Koda understands him. Which is weird since Ben didn't know he could actually talk. 1. Which is weird since Ben didn't know he could actually talk. Anyway Ben spends the noon break trying to put everything together. So that purple haired kid, Shinsu must have used a mind control quirk on him forcing him to compete. As Wild Mutt Ben was told to carry his team around the battlefield as he stole points. After the break Midnight explains the next event is a tournament Alionex has removed the cheerleader scene. 17. After the announcement Tojiro and a kid from 1B forfeit not finding it fair to move on if they were brainwashed during the last one. Ben on the other hand doesn't see a problem with moving on. While yes he was being told what to do it was still Wild Mutt's abilities that propelled him forward. Ben's first fight in the tournament? Ben Tennyson vs Mino Ashino 9 Vertical Bar Ben Tennyson vs Mino Ashido to the first few matches consisting of Midoriya vs Shinsu where they debated the true values of a hero and ended in Midoriya defeating him physically and psychologically Todoroki vs Suro where Todoroki quite easily defeated him in a single attack. Kaminari vs Some Vine Girl from 1B which ended in Kaminari being wrapped up in vines. And finally Ida vs Hatsume which was more of an advertisement for Hatsume's inventions ending in her forfeiting the match. Finally it spends match. Plus. He tries to think up a plan. Grandpa Max always told him to never go into a fight without one. Mina can produce acid from her skin. Meaning aliens like grey matter and rip jaws are out of the question. Forearms, cannon bolt or diamond head might be able to endure the acid but knowing the omnitrix he won't get them. Wild Vin can regenerate but with the concrete stage it would be hard to anchor himself to prevent being knocked out of the ring. Mina is already aware of Ditto and even one being knocked out would lose him the match. Maybe Stinkfly? 2. Yeah he'll try Stinkfly. We're gonna keep right on going with the fifth match, present Mick announces as Ben gets into the ring. He's wearing a watch and he's gonna transform. From the hero course, I tease Ben Tennyson. Versus. Is something going to come out of those horns? Well, from the hero course, I tease Mina Ashido. This time it's not going to be so easy. She comments toward her opponent. Ben is about to transform before the match starts but is interrupted. Ben get her. Ben can hear someone in the stands yell out. It's Minita. Of course it's Minita. Beat her like in those fighting games where their clothes get ripped off. Before Ben can even comprehend the request present Mick yells out fifth match, start. Plus. Without hesitation Mina begins skating toward Ben using her acid. Quickly he activates the Omnitrix cycling to Stinkfly. Panicking as she draws near Ben has trouble finding Stinkfly. Oh no you don't. Mina exclaims throwing acid at Ben's watch. You need that thing to transform right? Mina's acid hits the Omnitrix right at the moment of Ben hitting it. A blast of green feedback explodes from the watch causing her to recoil back. As the energy dissipates in Ben's place is a green puddle. By God. Present Mick exclaims in shock Mina Ashino appears to have liquefied poor Ben Tennyson. 11. Mina stands with her hands over her mouth now believing she just murdered a guy. The entire stadium is silent minus the whirring and hum of a strange floating device. Said device hovers over the pile of Ben as it begins to swirl and shoot up regaining humanoid shape. IT appears the puddle of goop has reformed and is ready to continue the match. Present Mick announces. 51. IT appears the puddle of goop has reformed and is ready to continue the match, present Mick announces. Mina Ashido is not in fact a murderer. 1. Usually I don't like getting new aliens in the middle of a fight, goop mutters. But this one seems pretty self-explanatory. Without missing a beat the device blasts forward dragging goop's body behind it. Mina responds by skating across the arena with her slime. Every attack she throws at goop has no effect as it appears this is now a one-sided match. Goop can attack her but she can't attack Goop. 
Goop, the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a polymorph from Viscosa. These slimy sluggers can reform and manipulate their bodies even capable of changing their pH levels making them able to switch between slippery slime and acidic sludge. Their home planet has a far lower gravity than Earth making it so most of the species require a portable anti-gravity device when off-world. No hard feelings Mina, Goop says charging her with a punch. She throws her arms up bracing for impact but nothing happens he opens her eyes to see Goop nowhere in sight. Only to look down to see him wrapping up her legs. Remember, tuck and roll, Goop says as his device begins spinning around swinging Mina around like a ball before throwing her out of the ring. Ben advances to the second round. Midnight exclaims. Incredible. Present Mick announces. We thought he died for a second there but not only did he get back up he won with such ease. Goop strikes a victorious pose before accidentally punching his own anti-gravity device and falling into a puddle again. Another transformation for the notebook. Midaria mutters writing down the information presented here. Such opportunity. Minita grumbles frustrated that Ben didn't use Goop to burn her clothes off like the absolute garbage boy he is. After reforming again Goop walked off the stage to wait for his next fight. 10 vertical bar Ben vs Tokoyami the first round finishes up with. Plus. Tokoi Army vs Ye Orozu where Tokoi Army won. Then Tetsu Tetsu vs Kairishima ending in a draw which will be settled later. Then Akuka vs Bakugo. And while Ben was hoping Akuka would win Bakugo manages to defeat her. The whole time Ben is trying to think of what aliens he'd use to fight. The quarterfinals come around as Kairishima's tiebreaker ends with his victory. First in the quarterfinals is Midoriya vs Todoroki which ends in him finally using his left side to defeat his foe which also negates his weakness of being unable to use the left side due to some physiological issue. Then is Ida vs Shiozaki which ends quickly with Ida pushing her out of bounds. Next up is Ben's match. Ben Tennyson vs Fumikage Tokoi Army. Ben steps up onto the stage. Dark Shadow, Tokoi Army exclaims as he attacks. Ben activates the Omnitrix trying to think of which alien to use. 5. Ben activates the Omnitrix trying to think of which alien to use. His first match showed he can overpower defenses, maybe even diamond heads. And Dark Shadow's a shadow, would Four Arms or Art even be able to fight it? And Goop is too new. Ben has no idea what alien would have an advantage here. Maybe Wild Mutt or XLR8 could outpace it? Dark Shadow draws near as Ben just gives up on thinking. Here goes nothing. Ben sighs pressing down the Omnitrix without even looking. With the ignition of Heat Blast's head Dark Shadow recoils and gets back. Plus. That's when he remembers something. A subconscious memory. Back in the cavalry battle as Wild Mutt he managed to overhear Tokoi Army explain his quirks weakness more like there is the less powerful his stand I mean quirk is. 4. Or. What's the matter? An ecstatic Heat Blast questions. Don't like the light? He flexes creating a blazing inferno around him increasing the light causing Tokoi army along with everyone in the stands cover their eyes. Dark Shadow is barely strong enough to move as Heat Blast closes the distance throwing a fireball down blasting Tokoi army out of bounds before he was even able to move from his starting position. Heat Blast presses the Omnitrix symbol on his chest down reverting to allow the light to die down. As everyone regains their vision they finally realize what happened. Fumikage Tokoi army has been knocked out of bounds. Midnight exclaims. Ben Tennyson wins. We barely even saw what happened. Present Mick announces. Another incredible display from Ben Tennyson. Poor thing IDKY but the moment people started saying endeavor I immediately thought of him seeing heat blast and going I have a new son just thought I'd share that funny thought okay I'm going to be honest. Plus. I have no idea what to do for the internship. I don't know who Ben should join. I don't know what they'll be doing. I do have a plan for the exam afterwards and even did a little art for one of the scenes. And I don't wanna do what I did in my hero, the world where I just went he did internship. Nothing of value happened. Cues I do have an alien Ben will unlock during the internship and it would seem kinda cheap to just go he unlocked this alien during his internship end of story. Unless that's what you want. I guess what I'm asking is. Do you guys want Ben to go through a storyline in an internship? And who should he intern under? Or should I just go he did internship? He got this alien and learned these values. 6. Also I'm not gonna have Ben face stain cues that Cedar, Todoroki and Midarius fight and it seems weird to take that away from them just to show Ben destroying stain with XLR8 or an alien who doesn't have blood like heat blast or upgrade. Anyway that's it I think.
Gonna continue writing Ben vs Bakugo now.